Peace. This is the Ash Your Old Head Podcast with Justice Raji. So, seeing as uh, Jay-Z has put this record out and the reading the tea leaves, reading the way folks are approaching it and talking about it, I'm, I'm struck with a couple interesting thoughts. Um, you know, from ageism in hip-hop as a genre, specifically to the way we perceive and receive messages, um, the way we understand people in terms of uh, public figures within their space and within the space that they occupy. Um, And then just on a musical level. Um, So I guess this will be my uh, 444 uh, episode. So, um, So here's my thoughts. So first time I listened through, I'm like, all right, you know, Jay, Jay, you know, to me at least, talk about stuff I've heard Jay Z talk about or at least mentioned before. Jay Z's always to me had a tone of even though he may have been talking about hustling and scrambling or, you know, messing around with, with, with women and various things, that he had at least an understanding that there was something more and also that there was a distinction to the way he needed to approach his own life. Um, you know, so always, I, I guess I'm going to call it Jay-Z exceptionalism. You know what I'm saying? He's always kind of like, y'all do it this way. I do it that way. Right. Now, as one who can connect with that sort of ethic, that's one of the things I've always sort of enjoyed about Jay-Z. At least I tune into with his music. Um, you know, as I, with any, with music and energy and things, I think I take the energy of the song, even if some of the subject matter ain't exactly connected to how I get down. I look at it and say, how does this apply to how I live? Right. Um, and, you know, I, I will bear witness to the reality that I operate with a certain degree of, you know, I'm an exceptional individual and I approach things in a certain kind of way. And a lot of y'all don't do it that way. Um, whether that, moves to arrogance which jay-z can go to is probably the thing that uh i I work very hard to avoid doing right you can be very self-aware of the way that you approach it and how that differentiates from the way those around you approach things without necessarily being condescending and disrespectful or you know uh, self-centered in a a very negative way which is what arrogance goes to i remember once um, speaking about a time in my own life to an elder of mine um, and and referencing myself as being arrogant at a certain time and he you know kind of gave me a course correction just like well I don't think you were arrogant um, you know arrogance requires a certain level of malice um, which he didn't think I ever had and I would have to agree like yeah I, haven't, I wasn't malicious at least not to anyone else but I was um, you know not performing at the highest level that I could so anyway I digress back to what we were saying so, you know, going through the record, you know what I mean, the, um, I'm going to start with the with the, the strength thing, let's see. Anytime somebody is at least trying to speak about and have some level of self-critical reflection, I'm with that. I think that is an essential ingredient to being a healthy man. I think if you have no self-critical, self-reflection you know, reflection on your own behavior, your own decisions, no ability to process things that you have actually done and be able to go, hmm, if I did that again or if I had another chance to run through that, maybe I'd do that differently. Um, not so much in the context of regret, like, oh, well, shit, I messed it up. I ruined it for all days and time. Um, but just in the context of what did I do? Okay, that's what I did. I could have did that different. Let's not repeat that. Right. That I can, I can connect with and that I highly endorse. And I think it's a, a part of, um, and not just exclusive to manhood, but to being an adult is being self-critical. Um, but that's, you know, in any event. So, um, I appreciate that in several of the songs, um, showing some public vulnerability, which I've spoken on before in some of these episodes around creativity and the experience um, as I lived it in terms of, you know, failing in public, right? So fighting to do to do something and failing in public is not always something that we feel um, in the black community you can do. 
um, or unless or unless we're failing within certain lanes, meaning you out here in various scrambling schemes in the streets, right? People fail in public in that lane all the time, right? But they don't necessarily feel the same type of uh, weight about it because there's um, an expectation, one, that it's the streets. We all know how that ends. Um, two, the, uh, the, the entry point is not a, a high risk, right? So, you know, you can get into scrambling and dipping and dodging, you know, they always signing people up for free, right? But say starting uh, some other type of business, uh, you know, you know, going in, trying to start something and, and, and getting a loan or trying to solicit, you know, to build a partnership with someone else in the community to build something, whether that's an organization, whether that's an after school program, whether that's, you know, something at your spiritual institution, there's a risk if it doesn't fail that those that you have, you know, encouraged and enlisted to, to follow through on this activity, if it doesn't go well, you know, that somehow they're going to lose face. You know, that, that thing is, I think, at least for me, has been an experiential reality of like, you know, plan and plan and plan and plan so that you don't actually, that the risk is very low. Um, however, I've learned that most times you're just postponing the inevitable. You need to go ahead and figure out if what you is what it is you're trying to do is good or not good. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the record, the number of songs that basically, especially at the the age the brother is at, um, you know, he's making developmentally appropriate music. Um, I know some of y'all don't know about human development on a level that I do, um, but if you study a little bit, he is showing a, an appropriate level of response to where he's at in life. You know what I'm saying? As my, my good brother stated, dude's been wealthy for like 20 years. You know what I mean? If not wealthy, at least rich. What he's supposed to talk about. He's supposed to make another record about coming up hustling or about, uh, you know what I mean? Slapping chicks on the ass and shit. Like, real talk. What's he supposed to talk about? Um, so, with that, I, I that part I appreciate. Um, I like the production on the second, third, fourth listen. First two listens, I felt the energy level was a little lower than I like it sometimes. Although you should bear in mind, I'm a Run the Jewels fan. I'm an MOP fan. I'm an old JC fan too. But like you know, I, when I work out, hit the steel, other things. Sometimes I need that adrenaline rush. Um, this album don't that doesn't necessarily have that sound, and that's okay. Everybody don't gotta have the same sound. Um, but like I said, uh, upon going back through on a couple tracks and listen, I'm like, all right, I mean, there's, there's a sufficient level of energy and probably a more age appropriate level of energy, uh, given my current degree, uh, in the world. Um, so there's that the, uh, I got the, the negative things that it's not, I'm not going to go to those yet. I have a couple more things I want to speak on on the positive side. Um, I appreciate the idea of him sort of publicly, you know, as a creative person that is, you know, in a long marriage with um, the person that many feel is sort of the, the standard bearer of funky, fresh uh, black woman creativity on planet Earth and Beyonce. Uh, I think it's reasonable that he makes uh, a public, you know, public speech around the dynamics that she brought up in her record. Um, actually, it's kind of fresh you know, on some level, you know what I mean, to see that, uh, and then being, uh, willing to, to talk about, you know, that in the, in the way that you can cryptically talk about something that's very personal <laughs> in public, right? Um, I think the idea and the, the lie of our current social media apparatus, uh, you know, websites and all that is that everybody is going to be, people are actually being a hundred percent that it's reasonable for people to be honest about everything that happens in their lives and public in like a bearing their soul kind of way. And I think there's a space for subtlety for implication for, you know, all right, maybe there was, there was a, a some infidelity in a relationship without us getting a salacious blow by blow of what happened and who and where and what point in the relationship and where and who was, the, and did it involve? Is it still going on? Was it multiple? You no, know, we don't need to know all that. 
about their relationship. You know what I'm saying? I look at these things from a community perspective. If we, if we live on the same block and y'all are a couple on my block and y'all have, you know, a long-term relationship, then there's some transgressions, right? And then y'all trying to, you know, reconcile and work it out. Ultimately, I want y'all to be happy. And if y'all want to be together, I want y'all to be together. I don't need to be over here exacerbating and making it difficult for y'all, whomever needs to, at some point, sort of save face, as we were talking about a moment ago, to be able to come back into the community without it feeling like, damn, they know everything, right? Y'all want to know everything. It's ridiculous. Stop trying to know everything about other people, especially if it's not mission critical to you, right? As a man, these are not, it's not useful, right? Um, as a human, it's not useful. You need to know what you need to know for safety. You need to know what you need to know for, you know, approximate, you know, kind of in relationship to your connection to the actual persons involved, right? So if you're a confidant to one of those people, yeah, you should know deeper because they need somebody to put that on so that they can wrestle with it. But if you ain't the confidant, man, stop trying to learn people's shit. Fall back in any event. So there's my thoughts on that. Um, the the criticism I've heard, and I've seen a couple different angles on this, seen some from people that have deeper industry knowledge who just, you know, have strong opinions about the brother in terms of like, you know, how he's managed uh, certain things uh, from record labels and all that type of stuff. And I don't have that perspective, so I can't judge that. The thing I find most interesting is folks sort of giving this like, oh, well, dead prez and this conscious and this da 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 said, said, has said these things. So why are people excited that Jay Z saying it? Right. And that, and not so much the messaging as the the concept of well why so excited about jay-z saying it you know almost like uh like if you got a older sibling so to speak and you you know you knew about something that happened in the neighborhood and you went home tell your moms or whatever because she needed to know and ain't nobody listening to you then your older sibling they say it and everybody like oh for real or vice versa, which may be but the case more in my family, where the younger siblings say it, and it's like, oh, man, that's amazing. Older siblings say it, nobody cares, right? Sometimes the messenger matters, right? And there's a lot of people who assume that Jay-Z does not have these thoughts, right? And they assume that Jay-Z's, you know, operational you know, success in the industry and in business and in music does not include any of these thoughts. Now he's expressed many of these thoughts, you know, maybe in a more distilled form in other records, you know, and we could do the whole like, oh, here in this record, here's this little bit, here's this bit, here's here, I could go, we could do that. I'm not going to do that. You go listen to his records <laughs> and then do a little deeper introspect, you know, in, in investigation. Um, but I just find that sort of criticism of the message almost like, you know, the, the idea that's like, it's too little, too late, Jay. Like, you should have been telling people this or whatever. Um, as if he had, you know, a vehicle and a machine, so to speak, to put out a video, put out the entire record, everything, without really anyone else. There's no, there's no gatekeeper that could keep Jay-Z from putting out a record like the record he just put out at this point in his life. And at any other point in his music career, there was a gatekeeper. Um, and maybe there is a gatekeeper now. I'm sure some of y'all got some Illuminati hoi polloi y'all running with right now. I'm like, dropkick one of y'all with that. Um, however, the idea that that once someone, if someone establishes a, an operation, establishes a, a, a entity that can allow them to come and reveal more in a deeper way, um, that they shouldn't do it, um, or that it's too late now. I don't know. Seems like I don't know how that helps us either. So that's how I feel to all y'all, you know, that are like mad at Jay Z, I guess, because he didn't say this earlier or something, or mad other people wasn't listening. Um, you know, but also bear in mind, I'm a five percenter. I I say stuff. I've been saying stuff for <laughs> going on twenty, almost twenty, not twenty five. Whew almost 25 years that um, I'm like, hey, man, 
how y'all ain't know this, right? It's stuff, it's stuff that people are doing right now that in my brother could bear my witness. I talked about coming down the pipe in the nineties, you know, within the first couple of years of me, you know, getting through my degrees and whatnot. And a lot of that stuff is, is happening in real time. So for me, the idea of being somewhere up in my feelings about, well, why you ain't listen. it's like, I can see things all the time where folks ain't listen. So in any event, there's that. Um, the other thing I found pretty interesting about the record um, and the timing of it is it's um we're in an interesting place you know with the with the with the trump situations and um, some people's realization that america is is a very challenging place uh, especially depending on your uh where you sit in it within the class race gender you know economics everything else uh, as it pertains to that um but the the willingness to sort of you know try something of this nature at this point in his career i think it's something pretty admirable i know some of y'all ain't got old heads that's why i'm doing this work why i'm trying to talk about this why I'm, you know so there's things that he's talking about in there that i got from men and women women and men in my in my own pantheon you know what i'm saying of wisdom you know what i'm saying my my pantheon of elders you know and big brothers big sisters you know that have dropped in my lap at different times um we don't always have a clear methodology to translate the wisdom that's around us right and i say wisdom because i'm talking about experience specifically and i'm talking about knowledge knowledge and experience are not the same thing um experience is a is a measure of time with the presence of activity knowledge uh is more of a is the, is the static static you know formation of that added wisdom that wisdom could be distilled in the knowledge right but the wisdom itself the wisdom you got to experience it for it to get the context so you, that's how you get to the understanding so i said that to say that answers is all out there right there's a lot going on take the best part for yourself if you listen to the jay-z record and you like man i gotta get on my i gotta get my thing together man i'm out here playing games you know even if it's been a whole lot of other people and other records that say hey man get your game get this stuff together we gotta we gotta work we gotta have community and all that you know whoever you get the truth from get the truth don't run around here worried about, well, this ain't the right time for me to get the truth. You know what I'm saying? And to those that's fighting hard to stay ignorant, I mean, more power to you, man. You got to deal with the ramifications of your choices. I'm going to do the best I can to support those who want to hear it. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm a, uh, I guess I might call it a wrap there, I guess. Um, I did, though, on one closing note. And something I'm really adamant about is, you know, old dudes, I need y'all to stop banging on these young dudes. Old dudes where everything was better when they was coming up and that young can't get it. I'm going to say this today and I'm going to say it all the time. If you believe the young can't get it, who the hell going to give it to them? If you think you got it, but the young don't want to get it. So therefore, you ain't going to give it to him. Who is going to give it to him? Right? If you don't do it, who going to do it? I got two kids. I got nieces and nephews. You know what I'm saying? I work with young people. I work with young men. If I'm not willing to try to give it to them, get them what they need to know, give them an ear, tap them on the shoulder, point them in the right direction. I ain't saying make all the choices for them. But if I if I accept the fundamental idea that they can't or it can't get it and they're not willing to get it and they'll never be as good as then I've quit the end of the game. Right. So old dudes, stop banging on the young dudes, young dudes. And I know this ain't a lot of y'all young dudes. It's a few of y'all young dudes, though. Slow down. All right. Slow down, young dudes. Just, you know, 
sometimes old dudes are trying to tell you something. You might not like the way he's telling you it. You might, you might not like the way he says it. You might not like the way he articulates his thoughts. You might not like the way he manifests his reality. But slow, slow down, young dude. You know what I mean? Stuff to learn out here. And if you are so certain that you got it all locked down and you know exactly what you're doing, don't be out here whining about the circumstances that you're dealing with. All right? So that's what I'm going to close out on. You know, shout out to Jay-Z. Take the best part for yourself. And also, if you don't like Jay-Z, fuck Jay-Z. Then. I don't know. Make make <laughs> Choose the side and, and live with it. Uh, but for me, you know, I enjoyed the record. Um, I appreciate, you know, creativity in every record. that got to be the end all be all of all records. So that's that. So that's my 444. You know what I mean? I guess that's my, you know, that's my early thoughts, you know, on the 4th of July. You know what I'm saying? Out here, people popping off firecrackers. So, with that, let me tell you, enjoy your family. Be safe. Take the best part for yourself. And this has been the Ask Your Old Head Podcast with Justice Raji. Peace.